beyond Fahrenheit. Welcome to another episode of Federo Speaks, which is a very, very, very special episode where I have some very special panelists where we will be continuing the conversation of last month where we will be discussing mental health. This week's panels is going to be on the topic of mental health and women in America. And we have um, here today i want to introduce everybody myself but i'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves but today we have we're bringing back our returning special special facilitator delicia who will be leading this conversation with the women she did she's done such an amazing job on the previous uh, panel discussions with family and suicide and women in suicide so today she's going to be leading the conversation with women on women and uh, mental health in America. Uh, Delicia, you got anything you want to say? I just want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome you ladies. I thank you for participating again. And I want us to really dive in and, and open our hearts and our minds to each other to hear what we've experienced, to hear what we've been through. And I just, uh, like I said, the anticipation and expectation that I have today, I'm excited because I know that this is a place that the organization PWP, we want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel loved, validated, heard, and seen. So I hope that you will be willing to open up today to share so that if anyone else just happens to run across this, they will know that it was genuinely and our hearts were in it and we gave uh, of ourselves and so that they could be uh, seen and heard as well, okay? Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Delisha. So as I stated, we're continuing the conversation on mental health in America. I'll be honest today. Today, I'm a little frazzled in my own mind. So I'm really, really looking forward to just ah, feeding off of these ladies. Um, Like with the previous women's discussions, I typically am just like a fly on the wall. I may jump in and out, may poke in, say this and say that. So y'all can see me jumping in and out of the conversation. But primarily this conversation is for you ladies. There are no men here. This is an, uh, a platform where we want you to feel safe, as Delicia said, feel open to express yourself. While none of us are definitive experts on the topic of mental health, we all have co collective experiences with different variations of mental health issues and disorders and just going through life's trials and so forth and the way that they can just really bear on your heart, mind, and spirit and which it can can so uh, affect us where as we discussed last month where we can then get to the point where we despair of life itself um we discussed last month how i uh struggle with my mental health over the pandemic coming out of the pandemic even still I, I realize it's really easy to fall back into a state of depression so mental health is something is not uh, 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 something you can pick up and put down pick up and put down it is a muscle that you have to work out like you work out with your your regular health you go to the gym you eat right you got to be careful what you're putting on your mind what you're putting in your heart and what you're putting in your spirit so that is my little Fidel Speaks free treat for the day and with that said I'm going to toss the mic over to Delicia who's going to give you ladies the opportunity to introduce yourselves as you begin the conversation I'm uh -huh. I'll be around and I'll, I'll let you ladies have it. Enjoy. All right. All right. So we're going to start with Miss Angela Ross and I'll let her introduce herself, but she is one of our board members on PWP. So Miss Angela, introduce yourself to the ladies. Hi, everyone. Uh, I work uh, for the city of Chicago. Uh, primarily, I monitor daycare centers that's funded through the city. And I uh, I actually love my job, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm so glad to be here this, today. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ms. Angela. Ms. Joy, just as your name, it's a joy to see your smiling face. Can you introduce yourself once again? Sure. Good morning, ladies. Um, my name is Joy, Joy Frierson. I live in Chicago. I'm from St. Louis, relocated there about um, three and a half years ago. I uh, met Fidel 
we worked together with Identity Ministry at uh, New Life Southeast. And um, just, he's just phenomenal. Um, I'm, I'm not going even because I can talk about him all day. <laughs> but um, I uh, work for Evangelical Covenant Church. I am a manager of their database services, which basically just manages all of the monetary donations, everything that comes in from individuals and churches. I'm also a certified life coach focusing on um, teenage and young women, um, emphasis on trauma. All right. Um, I um, am so delighted to be to be back. Um, um, our other session was just, it was so beneficial for me in ways that I can't even imagine. So I'm so, so delighted to be back. Mental health is very, very dear to me. As uh, Federal said, I learned a long time ago that it is absolutely something that you do not put down and pick back up. It is an ongoing um, uh, struggle, but uh, we can win, we can yes. fight, amen. Yes. The yeah, victory that's a, is at hand and a half. All right, yeah. now, thank you. All right, Miss Diane, can you introduce yourself? Are you you still on mute? Okay. I was there actually, we go. Hear me? <laughs> yes. There we go. Hi. Um, my name is Diane Rogers. Um, I am born and raised in Chicago. Um, I am a dental assistant. Um, clinical coordinator, if you will. Um, and I know Federo because uh, he is my tribe leader at our church, New Life. So shout out Tribe 12. Woo woo. Federo's <laughs> the tribe leader. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. Um, this is my first time here. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what this is all about and see what I can take away from it. Okay. All right. I appreciate you being here today. Miss Mia Campbell, welcome back. Can you introduce yourself? Hi. <laughs> Hello. I am <laughs> I'm so glad to be back. Um, Mia Campbell, and I am a preschool teacher when my health allows. Um, I do project management, freelance project management, and I am in the work so i'm working on my first book so right. hopefully that'll be done by the end of this year <laughs> um i know for daryl from jg group tribe 12 as well All right. <laughs> um and i'm glad to be here it's a blessing to be here it's a blessing to get to know all of you um i've been having a wonderful time getting to know for, for daryl and everybody in my jg group and to get to know you ladies is a blessing so i'm ready for the conversation all right all right i'm ready to dive in today as well so i just wanted to start off i'm reading just a few statistics um it says more than one in five women in the united states experience a mental health condition in the past year it says such as depression or anxiety many health uh, conditions such as depression and bipolar disorder affect more women than men or affect women in different ways from men. And we've all experienced that because we're ladies here on the on the line. But the first um, topic that we have is just understanding mental health conditions. And the reason that we wanted to discuss this as an organization is because sometimes in general, just from my own experience, we don't recognize all the mental conditions and disorders that are out there. And sometimes we don't even recognize that we have them. We just think we're a little sad or a little anxious or, or something or whatever the case may be. But the statistics show that if you're dealing with something for a certain amount of time, it, they say two weeks. That's to me, that's too short. In two weeks, I mean, you don't know. Your hormones could be two weeks and change and shift. So that that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's really grounded in real truth and real life, okay? Let's be real. So my thing is, is that they said that mental health conditions, and these are just some of them. And then I'm gonna ask each person to uh, try to listen, or if you have the list already printed out, to maybe just speak on one or two uh, or whatever you, comes to your heart and, and what you wanna discuss about these things that you've experienced or maybe someone else's experience. So I'm gonna go down the list quickly, but it's um, one is alcohol use. That's considered an actual disorder. Substance abuse, that's a disorder. Addiction, anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders, which can include manic depressive illness, 
um, body dysmorphia disorder, uh, borderline personality disorder, uh, depression, uh, again, eating disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, postpartum uh, depression, and post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. And so these were just some of them. And if you get, got the printout, we have a lot, a longer even list. So it's, it's just, you know, these disorders or just mental health is not just one thing that you can put your hand on. Me and Angela were uh, discussing before we opened up the panel, everything is connected to our minds. Everything is connected to our heads. Anything that we do think, feel whatever the case may be, it's in that head of ours. So I'm going to start since I'm the facilitator and I'm gonna share that I had body dysmorphia um, in my thirties. I didn't understand that I had body dysmorphia. And that's, what I, that's why I was saying that um, having body dysmorphia, I really didn't understand it. But the Holy Spirit helped me actually understand it because he was like, you don't like your body. I didn't like, um, I didn't understand how people saw me as beautiful. I was big. I was like, what's beauty, what's beautiful and big? I just didn't get it. And I was like, I looked at people on TV and in my you know, time was Holly Berry to me. I was like, oh, she's so most beautiful. Well, come to find out she just as touched as anyone else. And I'm just like, I, you know, I thought beauty meant everything. I thought if you were beautiful, that oh, you were small and skinny, you didn't have no problems. The world treated you the best in, in life and all this other kind of stuff. So when I came to the conclusion of understanding body dysmorphia, the Lord would tell me every day to look in the mirror and say, if I created something wrong on you, then you're calling me a liar. Litter, and I, it, that was hard for me to swallow because I'm not a person that's going to go against the Lord just outright and say, you're a liar. So I had to contend with and own up to every time I looked at myself in that mirror, I was going to call God a lie if I didn't like what I saw. Or if I talked down to myself and told myself, oh, that could be different or that could be way. It was like, nope, that's exactly how you planned it to be. And so that's exactly how it's going to be. And I'm going to accept that and go on in life and make sure that I own up to what you have created in me. Everything has its place. Every hair on my head has its place. My lips look the way they're supposed to. My nose and eyes touch the way they're supposed to. Whatever it is, that was the way you meant for it to be. And so that's how I got past that but it took me some time. And like uh, Joy was saying earlier, it took me years. I had to pick it up and just keep molding it, keep working on it and keep, you know, uh, cutting this off and like, okay, that's not that. That's not good for me to think that way. Bring it back as a man thinketh, so is he. So I, instead of just saying that saying, I had to get that saying in my spirit. So I'll go back around and start with Diane, was there any kind of mental health condition that you wanted to speak on today or share with us today? Um, yes, I would say um, maybe just, um, so for me, I guess it's kind of hard to like pinpoint it only because I try to um, relate it back to, you know, kind of like what you're saying, um, Delisha, like, you know, what God says about us, you know what I mean? Like, um, being careful with my words so that I'm not like manifesting things or that I am not like declaring certain things, you know, trying to, um, be strong in that. And like, you know, declare that I'm like fearfully and wonderfully made and, and you know, yeah. things like that, just like trying to remember the good in it all. But I would say, um, maybe even, um, some like depression or sadness, um, and it's funny that you said that about, you know, um, the body dys dysmorphia, dysmorphia. Sorry, I don't know mm -hmm. dysmorphia. Um, because even in just what you're describing, it's like, wow, that was deep, you know, to the point where I would have to look in the mirror and tell myself like, man, you know, to call God a liar is serious business, you know, yeah, serious um, business. He's, <laughs> he's not a man that, that can lie. So, yes. um, you know, and that's something else it's, it's, it's funny because this all relates back to your mental, right? It's like yes. your, your mind is the most powerful thing. Um, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Jamon, they talk about all the time, you know, um, 
that's the first thing that the devil wants to try to get is your mind and take that from you. And it's a powerful thing. So, you know, it's, it's a hard and it's a struggle, but I would definitely say, um, depression and that I've been sad about certain things in my life and trauma or things that have happened. And, um, thankfully, um, my sister happens to be a mental health therapist, um, Mm -hmm mental health therapist. So in, in confiding in my sister and venting to my sister, you know, we can technically, she cannot diagnose me, <laughs> you know, exactly, um, exactly. period, but she gives me insight on things that like, I would never think of, you know, like, you know, little things, you know, not, not feeling so good, not wanting to take a shower, not wanting to go out, not wanting to be around people, you know, isolating yourself. Those are sometimes signs of depressions and, you know, yes. overeating things like that, that you never think of that is just like, well, I've kind of always been this way or, you know, whatever. Um, so I, I could, I could say depression. I can say, um, a few of those things off of that list, yes, you know, now yes. that it's being presented, now that it's something that I'm hearing and it's like, well, I can recognize those things in myself or that I've had issues with those things. Um, a various, a, a very serious thing, but I also, again, I try to relate it back to like, you don't know, no, I'm not going to stay there. I'm not going to think like that, you know, try to get in worship, try to get in my word. Um, but it's easy when you feel that way to like isolate yourself and sometimes it's easier. And I feel like that's also something that the devil wants to do is try to get us alone. And like, you know, it's, it's, there's a difference between like God trying to separate you and get you alone versus like isolating yourself and not wanting to be around anybody. And I think that that happens so easily, you know, um, in daily life with friends, family, anything, you're just like, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be around anybody, you know? And it, 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 there's a difference between just like I need a little time a little quiet time and I'm trying to relax versus like I don't want to be bothered leave the lights off like don't talk to me don't touch like kind of thing so yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you touched on so much oh my god you touched on so much because um last coming out of 2020 I didn't think I had like uh depression on me because I, I was just like I was working from home I had to deal with the people I work with no more I was like doing good you know but then when I saw that I wasn't like doing the things that I had did just for my self-worth I was like some that something is not right and like I said my thing and my issue is that sometimes we just don't recognize it and even with body dysmorphia yeah. And Joy probably will be able to piggyback on this is the fact that people can tell you all the day long, but if you don't have it in yourself, it yeah, will yeah. never change. My mother yeah. has, my mother is I, what I call her as an exhorter. That's someone that's just always like your cheerleader. Yay, yay, yay. 24 seven. So I never had the problem of someone telling me I was beautiful. I the, like the way you dress. She would even uh, say, hey, they got uh, bigger women clothes is better than smaller women. I don't know what you talking yeah. about. I used to be like <laughs> thinking like she is cuckoo. Like who believes that or thinks that? But that's what I'm saying. If it's not in your head and you're not, like you said, holding on to it and thinking it for yourself, your sister can say it 10,000 times, but you yeah. have to get it. It has yeah. to be on your own accord. You're standing on your own two feet and saying, I do believe this. I yeah. do believe this. No matter what comes, who says what, I truly believe this. My mom doesn't have to tell me. My friend doesn't have to tell me. No one has to tell me. But if I don't get it on my own and I'm not standing on it and I'm not grasping it and working to tell myself, like, girl, don't believe this. not a lie because the enemy will tell you, hey, it's a lie. You just telling yourself something. OK, we're going to keep it real today. You yeah. lying to yourself. <laughs> Who do you think you are? What you doing? Who told you you was beautiful? Like God did. And how does God define me? And I ask myself that question. Whenever I see the slope coming, how does God define me? And then that's what I tell the devil. This is how he defines me specifically. And I go down the list. (laughs) And then, then when you got something new, then come back and talk to me. But in this moment, if you can't surpass that list, we don't have nothing to talk about. Right. So I, pre- I appreciate, um, did you want to continue or I had anything more to say? I'm sorry. No, no, um, you're good. I, <laughs> I said as much as I thought I needed to or like okay. felt like in that, um, okay. in that moment. Okay. So thank you. Okay, okay. So I'm going to jump to Joy because she says like she just <laughs> Look, ready to go. I was taking my mute off. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you ready? And me and next, because I see her like, come yeah, on. Yeah, she, listen, <laughs> you said 
you said so much, Diane, you said so much. I just want to piggyback off a couple of things when you were saying about how people can tell you something all day. I shared in my last panel about my name being Joy, right? Mm -hmm. All my life, people have said, well, you don't have a choice but to be jo have joy. Your name mm. is Joy. Mm. Well, you don't have a choice but to be happy all the time. Your name is Joy. Well, you don't. And I was like, do, do people know how much weight that is? You yeah. know, it's like, I know that. So in the midst of me trying to navigate my own life, mm -hmm. faith walk, I'm listening to people. Well, I'm supposed to always be happy. I'm supposed to always be happy because my name is Joy. So when depression is creeping up, sadness is creeping up, when disappointments are creeping up, I'm I'm doing this. I'm mm -hmm. pushing it down mm -hmm. because I'm supposed to always be Joy. And for a lot of my life, I masked my depression with jokes. Yes. Laughter. Yes. I'm going to always be woohoo. The life of the party. But on the, right, but on the inside though, but nobody, nobody could see that on the inside because then not only was it well your, your name is Joy, so you supposed to always be happy. It was oh you strong, mm -hmm. you know. People sometimes take what the scriptures say and tweak it to what they want it to be. Mm -hmm. You know, God can He not gonna put nothing on your shoulders that He knew you can handle it, so you can take this. And I, sometimes I'll be like, dude, right? <laughs> everybody else is looking at me talking about I'm strong, but do you see that I'm crumbling? Mm -hmm. Like I'm crumbling. Mm -hmm. And I shared before my, my second bout, bout with suicide, because I, I tried twice, was I was had accelerated to a manager. I was doing well, had friends doing well, you know, in church all the time. Everybody saw me. I was always smiling, this and that and the other. And I woke up on a Tuesday morning and looked in the mirror, Delisha, mm -hmm. and I was like, I can't put on this mask anymore. Yes, that's it. I was just going to say that we we carry around have you, you know those tribal African masks that they have? Some of mm -hmm. them just go on your face, but some of us have shields so big it covers our entire body mm -hmm. because that's that's the mask that we portray when people tell us like you're saying my name is Joy, but you don't understand because I look good don't mean I feel good. I mean, I that's feel it good. right there. Looks and feeling are totally two different things. And people always think that they they are, are one and the same and they're not. And they're not. And back to something that Diane said about being sure of what you declare out of your mouth. Um, I am working through that now because mm -hmm. I used to now I've always been um, thick, baby. I've always <laughs> been thick and fine. Right. Yeah. And I have never, I never had an issue with low confidence, low self-esteem ever in my life until about five years ago. Mm. And I have been saying, I'm like, what is, I have never not liked my body. Mm. I may be having depression. I may be whatever, whatever, but I'm like, like you said, I'm like, God made this thick chocolate baby and mm -hmm. she fine. Mm -hmm. But about five years ago, so then I had to start thinking back the last couple of relationships I've been in, they've cheated on me. Mm -hmm. They said things to me to make me think I wasn't beautiful. Mm -hmm. That and was so, that was the enemy planting that seed. Planting those seeds. And he, so he, was plant, he, was, he was in the process of planting that seed. And, and like, that's and, exactly and the what thing that I noticed, from. he doesn't do it with one person. Nope. He do it was one, two, three. So what mm -hmm. he does is if one person said it, Oh, I could I could brush off one person, mm -hmm. but if three or four, five, six said it, it must be something to it. And then you but then people. But guess who, what? Something to it is still a lie. It's still a lie. And so when you just said that, I wrote down make a list. When you said, you know, when the enemy comes, you go down your list. This is what God yes. said. This is what God said. Yes. This is what God said. And so and I was on a prayer call the other day, and she said something. That like, you know, when God comes at us, because he is, he comes, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when the enemy comes at us, because he do it, do, we de declare out of your mouth until God finishes what he started in me. Mm -hmm. Everything you doing and saying is a lie. It is. It's and a so lie. God finishes what he started in me. That That's a lie. I don't believe. It. And so those are things I'm learning about the declarations and manifesting, because if I'm to be honest, I'm a, I, and I own, I don't have a problem owning my stuff. 
some of the things that I am dealing with now, health wise and physically, I manifested those things myself. Yes, you did. Everything is not the end. Exactly. Um, and so, but I'm learning that. So now I'm just going, I'm like, God, make that a crop fail, make that a crop fail, make that a crop fail. But I've done, I've suffered with depression, substance abuse. I used to mask it by drinking and smoking weed. Mm. Um, just all it, um, I, um, I don't know what category this fits in, but um, self-sexual abuse. And what I mean by that is- oh, that, we, just, have, we have that with next abuse, yeah. trauma, and mental health, yes. Yeah, just, you know, giving myself away to people mm-hmm. just to feel like I was loved, but I was feeling nothing, mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. at all. And mental health is a real thing. And I am so, and I apologize, I'm gonna say this and I'm done, mm-hmm. but I am so passionate about mental health because- it goes back to sometimes childhood, which a couple of you all know some things I shared before. Words stick. Yes. And when and when people say stuff to you, you don't know how that stuff is sitting. You don't know how it's manifest. You don't know what is triggering. Words matter and words stick. And it can mess with your mind. And even the strongest person is not strong all the time. Yes. There are times when I went to some of my closest family and friends and broke down and been like, I need you to see that I am struggling. I can't always be the one that's holding my arms out for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like I need to fall in somebody's arms sometimes. Yes. And, and it's, and it's hard to be in that position, but mental health is real. That thing is, yes, it ain't it no is. joke. And you, I've, been, I've had a therapist since I was 16 years old on and off my entire life. I'm 46 now. So you talking about 30 years. Mm. I'm not ashamed of it. I tell everybody, everybody needs a therapist. You don't need a therapist for six weeks. You need a therapist <laughs> period <laughs> yeah. because your life changes constantly. Yes. So you may have, you may have a therapist that worked something through with you for eight weeks, something else going to come up. So I, I've literally had one, not the same one for 30 years. Mm. And I understand that. Mm. Amen. And, I, and you should not be okay. Mm. <laughs> well, we thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to continue the conversation, but I'm going to try to give uh, Miss Mia and Angela a uh, chance to uh, comment as well. Mia. Okay, there Sorry, you go. I had to I had to find my mute thing. <laughs> um, you know, like at the time, like especially like growing up and actually coming to terms with the fact that we all go through some some form of mental health. Um, you know, it's so taboo in the black community to say, like, oh, I have depression or whatever the case may be. So as a kid or as a teenager and as a young woman growing up, I never knew what I was experiencing, but I have experienced it all from um, PTSD, from depression, anxiety, the whole shebang, even the, um, what is it? The, the body dysphoria, like yeah, the, the dysmorphia, dysmorphia. Like I've experienced it all. Like, um, coming up, I was always told that I was a pretty girl. Um, but I didn't always feel as though I was pretty because I had health issues that would alter the way I look or the way I feel and stuff like that. Like, um scars I have like a port put in and stuff like like I have a port here and I have a scar that's like across my stomach that like just stretches right across my stomach I have gallbladder scars spleen scars surgery scars everywhere like IV scars marks up and stuff marks and like I remember one time I went to the emergency room and um I went to my regular um, hospital like normal or whatever. And usually all of the nurses there know me. So one particular night it was a new nurse and I was like, okay, whatever. So he asked me how long I had been using. And I'm like, using what? Mm. Because I have so many IV scars on my hands and my, uh, you know, on my hands and up and down my arms, you know, like it may, it's, it makes me very insecure. Like, um, discoloration in my skin my teeth my nails my eyes from getting jaundice from my sickle cell and you know it's just like and so like um people assume when they see certain things about me like like okay like oh you know like like I do drugs because I have 
track marks all over my arms and stuff like that. And that's not even the case. Mm. So um, even though I've been told like since a, a, a little girl that I was pretty, but never felt pretty, you know, because of the, 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 the trauma that my body has been through since I was a year old, like, you know, like emergency surgeries and stuff like that. And like, uh, it's just over the, like 34 years worth for a worth, worth of scarring all over my body. So like my husband, he tells me like, I have to get used to saying a husband. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> congrats, congrats. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so my husband, he's like, that's what makes you you you're that that makes you beautiful that makes you uh attractive to me you know though you know those those scars equate to that equals out to the woman that you turned out to be like he was like never be ashamed of what it is that you've been through your scarring he like embrace it he like you wear it in in, in in as a like how you would wear a tiara he was like show it he was like, because you made it through. He was like, it was a reason why God spared you in every situation. So yeah. he was like, where? And, I, and I'm trying to accept that, you know, because yeah. it's always easier to hear somebody say it to you than to actually accept it. And it's like, like you, like you say, it's like what you think, what you, uh, what you think, what you speak on yourself or whatever. And, and, and you gotta know that God doesn't make any mistakes. Like my brother, he, my, one of my younger brothers, he always tells me like, it's hard for me to believe in God because I didn't understand you growing up being sick all the time. <clears throat> He's like, so why is it that you know what I'm saying? If God exists, and why why would you suffer the way you were from from child from birth? Like why would you suffer the way you suffer if God exists? And my father, if he didn't do anything else in life, he told me, because I'm like I'm the only sibling that has sickle. I have eight siblings, and I'm the only one that has sickle cell anemia. I'm the only one that has any illness at all. And he told my 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 dad told me God gave you that for a reason. That's going to be your strength. That's going to be your tool. And he was like, out of all of your brothers and sisters, he's like, you're the only one strong enough to handle it. And I'm like, okay, right. you know, as a kid, I'm like, I don't want to hear that. But you know, I take it with me. You know, like I I take those words with me because I do believe that whatever it is that whatever reason God decided to give it to me, it's a it's, it's definitely a purpose behind it. And I'm actually in the process of figuring that out and learning how to use that as my strength instead of my weakness. Yes. Yes. I have, I have a, well, it's not my saying, but I've been using it the last three or four years. Our misery becomes our ministry. <laughs> Each of us, mm -hmm. the things that we went through, the things that we're over, uh, we get over. And, and me, Angela was saying, when you get on the other side, that's what the old folks use. When you get on the other mm -hmm. side of that thing that you thought was going to kill you, that becomes your ministry. That becomes the way that you can relate to someone who has been through the same exact thing. You're not just telling them because you've heard it. You're telling them because you know it, because yes. you've lived through it, because you understand why that scar is there. So you can pull out your scar and show them your scar. Well, yes. this was when I had my 15th surgery. This was when I had mm -hmm. my 25th IV. So again, I, it seems like to us that it's misery, but it does become our ministry. And whenever you're, when it becomes your ministry, it becomes life changing. Yes, and it, it becomes is. burden removing and yoke breaking because someone sees and can put together and understand I'm not the only person who is like this. I'm not the only person who has been through this. I'm yeah. not the only person in the world. So I, when you understand someone's misery and pain, that is ministry. Yes. Yeah, it exactly. is. And so, yes. and so your, <laughs> husband is, your husband is so right. Um, and it's a blessing that you can have someone in your life, a man who can love you like that. So he's showing you that the, the love of God 
is possible. And I thank oh, God yeah. for that. I thank God for yeah. your husband. I and, <laughs> and me as well, because <laughs> yes. I definitely had some trash ones like, oh God, I'm gonna throw you back. <laughs> Yes, but but I but we also we also remember that you know what our trash ones make us understand that good one, that tra those trash ones and those zeros and whatever else we want to call them. Yes, <laughs> keep it PG. Whatever yes. else we want to call them, I'm telling you the benefit of mm -hmm. understanding what you have when it's a blessing like that. Yes, you know it's God, and it can yes, only it be God that can do that. <laughs> and it's so funny, real quick. <laughs> okay. It's so funny because when we started dating, and he knew that I had a health issue before we started dating, he didn't really know to the extent of how critical it could be. He, well, when we when we got deeper and deeper into our dating, he would look up holistic doctors and he right. like try this and go to this um, health food store. We try all different types of supplements and stuff like this. So he looks up any and everything to help me feel better or to to get healthier and stuff like that. And I I'd be like, God, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful yes. because I've never experienced that, not with my family, not with my friends, not with any, like, not with anyone. Like, he's the first person to ever take the initiative to be like, okay, well, I'm in this with you. We're going to do what we got to do, and we're going to hit the ground running it, you know, and I, I, I it's, it's truly, truly a blessing. I, I do yeah, know that. Truly. <laughs> and then that's, it's almost like that's God's gift to you to show you that he loves you just as much as, as, as God does. So yes, that's a blessing. Thank yes, you for hearing that. That was just so wonderful and beautiful. I appreciate it. Thank so Miss Angela, <laughs> we're going to finally get to you, sweetheart. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, I appreciate all the, the stories that I've heard, and it just shows you how mental health affects everybody differently, yes. and that's what mental health does. Um, uh, I can, uh, in 2012, I had, a, I had a hysterectomy, a complete hysterectomy, mm -hmm. and I thought I knew what that was, and my doctor at the time, I thought she told me everything I needed to know, but the surgeon and all of that, but I didn't. I was like, um, I'm 56 now, so uh, however, y'all do the math. I'm too old okay. to even count. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was in my 40s, and uh, so I went in straight in menopause. Mm. So the effects of menopause affects everybody differently. Some people may not feel the different effects to later. Some may not feel this particular way, but they might get another feeling or symptom or, or what have you. So I had quite a few symptoms straight on. And one of them, uh, when I went home after a couple of days, I got, I started feeling depressed. I'm like, I just started crying. Um, just, just instantly started crying and I was old enough to know, okay, Angela, you're getting depressed. Why am I getting depressed? I couldn't understand why I was getting depressed. Was I depressed because I was at home? What? I didn't, I didn't get it. And at the time I was going through some things with my daughter. I'm like, okay, am I going, am I depressed because of my daughter? You know, I just didn't know. So when you don't know, you think of everything that might could be the solution. Yes. Long story short, uh, that was one of the major side effects from going straight in menopause, depression. And not everybody experienced it, but it would be me, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm totally serious. Why me? You know, we, we all often say, why me, Lord? Mm. But then it come back to you, why not you? Mm. So I, I uh, went to the doctor, had a checkup. They gave me some medication. Came home, took medication. First thing I said, I called my girlfriend. I, I can't do this. We're going to have to get together. Somebody, whatever. I'm going to have to get the Lord. We're going to have to pray this out for me because the medication just took me in. I said, thank God I, I've never done drugs. Otherwise, you know, I could have been able to accept it more, but I couldn't. And it just took me to another dimension. And so the prayer line I was in, we prayed and we prayed and I prayed and I prayed <laughs> and I just was fighting against it because I refused to take that medication. But I, in the, uh, then I also refused to be depressed. Yeah. So that was 2012. 
Mm. Fast forward. Uh, and I've always been a person, uh, my girlfriends tease me, you always stay on the go. You always stay on the go. I always got to find something to do. Not like I got to spend money, but always got to be engaged in something, something social, something just to keep me active. Didn't, know, didn't realize why. So 2021, I realized that, well, 2020, we had the pandemic. And my job, by me working for the city, they shut me down. And I wasn't going in to work at all. And I'm like, Lord, am I going to get depressed again? Because then as I stayed at home more, because I was home for like six weeks with that hit the rest of me and depression kept coming on, on and on thick. So 2020, I'm like, Lord, I can't do this. And, you know, I just, and I just kept talking, Lord, I can't do this. Lord, I can't do this. I can't get depressed. And so I would just constantly talk my way out of it, talk my way out of it, pray my way out of it. And so um, 2021 gets here and uh, things seem to make make sense. Um, I start having issues. Well, I've been having issues with my husband and we've been going back and forth. And so finally, I actually did leave. I actually left, meaning took furniture, everything (laughs) and left. Not just I left, took a few clothes. No, so I left and took furniture and everything. So that was a drastic move for me. So the Lord said to me, as I sat in my new place, you have to get to know you. And I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He said, and this is, this is me and him talking. I talk all the time, 24-7. I'm forever talking to the Lord. He said, you have to get to know you. You have never been on your own. I said, yes, I have. I'm 56 years old. I'm grown, right? Mm. And so I'm still not listening. So we have mm. to listen. Mm. So finally, I shut up in my mind. I just stop. And he says, this is the first time you've ever lived on your own mm. by yourself. Nobody, because I had children young too. 19, I had my first child. So I've never been alone, even with children. Um, so I had to re, it's re, refine Angela. And being alone was part of that mental psyche that played on me. I would, that's why I always would, you would stay busy, stay gone. And I never realized it. Uh-huh. Um, I'm always uh, with my family, finding things for us to do. Uh, just needed to be around people. I never realized that I, I was that serious. I was that, had it that seriously. Um, depressed. Depression plays many roles. Uh, depression doesn't always make you me going being doing things like that that was a form of depression and mm-hmm. I didn't realize it mm-hmm. and um I just only thing when he opened my eyes and showed me that a couple of weeks ago to be exact I just started shouting thank you Jesus thank you Jesus mm-hmm. thank you Jesus mm-hmm. so this is my season to get to know Angela mm-hmm. Amen. Me, me, myself, and I on my own with nobody. Yeah. So uh, y'all continue to pray for me. I know <laughs> I'm going to make it, but it's a it's a new journey for me, yeah. and um, and I'm ready for it. I, I yeah. really am. So that's the mental health that uh, I've been through, and um, not uh, not until now that that just got brought dropped in my spirit Mm -hmm. just like that as plain as i'm saying it Mm -hmm. as plain as the holy spirit spoke to me Mm -hmm. and that's 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 what happens because a lot of times we don't recognize it It, and and that's part of the problem is because you really don't recognize it like diane said earlier you know you thinking like oh i feel a little down oh i don't want to go out over the case may be 
But depression is not just like somebody being sad. Depression takes on so many forms because like you said, Angela, you were going out shopping. And that's one of the things I did. I shopped and I ate, okay? So my thing was, was that, okay, I, if I'm, I'm going to eat while I'm eating, I'm happy. You know, while I'm sad, I'm eating. I'm ha- I don't care. I'm going to eat no matter what my, you know, feelings are, whatever the case may be. But the thing was, was that I, I almost got fired off of my job because I was depressed, but I was shopping. And I had spent up to $10,000 on the company American Express. Shopping. Mm-hmm. Shop mm-hmm. and didn't even realize I was depressed. I was living in Tucson, Arizona by myself. But I was shopping to make myself feel like I was a part, uh, like I was living. And my testimony is one day I was in in my room and I was having an anxiety attack. Didn't know that was what it was either. Was going out of my mind, breathing heavy, like couldn't breathe, sweating. And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? And I could just could not get myself together in that moment. And next thing you know, the enemy was like, hmm, go in there and get one of them shoes. Go in there and get one of them purses. Them purses, them shoes, them clothes could not hug me. They could not comfort me. They could not say anything to me because they were an inanimate object, okay? They didn't do nothing for me. The only way I got out of it was I got a moment to call my mom and like pray for me. I'm breathing heavy, breathing. I can't catch my breath. Basically at this point, hyperventilating. I don't even see it as an anxiety attack until uh, months and years later. And I'm, but I'm, but, but I still have that testimony to this day. And I go back to that whenever I see myself doing a a little bit more than I need to, I'm like, what am I trying to replace? What am I trying to feel? Because when, when you get rid of one addiction, believe me, if it's not, if you get rid of eating, it could turn into shopping. It could turn into gambling. Addictions replace each other. Because why? That, that's the enemy. He wants to keep that stronghold on you. So it's like, what can I do to you or say to you to keep you in this stronghold of something? I don't want to release you. I don't want you to be free. I don't want you to live your life like you're supposed to, like God purposed and planned it. I can't let you do that. Then that wouldn't be any good for me. It would be good for God, though. So that's why. So we replace things when we get rid of one. Sometimes we replace it with another. And like you said, we just have to really work ourselves and be like, okay, am I seeing habits forming again? Am I going back to the same old thing? Because 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 the the addictions and the things that we have, depression and stuff. Sometimes we can depend on them because I I'm okay. It, it's, it's harder to fight the depression than to stay in it. I could just stay in it and wallow in it and, and who cares? It, it doesn't make a difference. I, I, I mean, it, it's, it's comfortable. But to get out of it is uncomfortable and it's harder. It's work to get out of it because I have to change my mindset. I got to change things to, to fight that, you know, uh, depression or fight that anxiety. I have to change things. They have to become a habit. Like Joy was saying, over the years, things change. They change quickly because, like I said, the enemy never wants to get his foot uh, foothold off of you and out of your life completely. He do- he he doesn't want to break that connection. He wants to always have a chance to get in there and say something or do something to put you back where you were. So I'm sorry, Angela, were you finished? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I found out that through my season that I, I had been going through that um, I had a fear of being alone. Uh, and it just uh, would play on me. The devil would use any tricks about, oh my God, to make you think. It's amazing how he can get into your thoughts. And so during the pandemic, uh, as we were first getting in the pandemic, I was staying in the bed till like 11, 12 o'clock, not sleep, just laying there. And then finally I had to talk, lay there and have my relationship with the Lord and say, Lord, I can't do this. I need your help. 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 
even though I was working, I still wouldn't get out the bed physically until like after 12 o'clock. So that was like the first couple of weeks, like last March, uh, going into April of the pandemic. So mm-hmm. finally I got myself together and got up and I had to keep a routine and I had to stick to that routine every day, get, get showered, get dressed like I'm going to work, sit in front of my computer mm-hmm. every day. Cause if I didn't, then I'll be letting the, the devil just overtake me and I'll go back to old things and let them have my mind and all of that awful stuff. So, yeah. uh, yeah. So Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And and we, I do want to welcome Antoinette. She joined us uh, recently. Do you have a chance and opportunity to talk? We're talking about mental health. Hi. Yes, ladies. Hello, everybody. Um, Yes, I definitely can relate. Mine's is so, (laughs) my my situation is uh, just terrible. (laughs) But um, I'm trying to get over some things as well. Everything that you ladies were saying um, that I heard, I'm experienced um, that as well. And I, I do eat. I will eat a lot. I will shop until I'm broke. Um, I have a lot of bad habits. Um, I even like talk to, I talk to a variety of people just so that I won't like be like lonely Mm because I was dealing with um, this guy. And, you know, sometimes I, I let like, somebody like be a little disrespectful until like it's the point where I had to just really curse them out like mm-hmm. some guys that I deal with I'd be like no okay you on you on games right now you on BS or you know I I kind of let them get a little disrespectful you know but it, I just can't do that it's just to the point where I just I can't I can't I can't deal with a lot of things anymore my last relationship um def- definitely uh damaged me Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to change a lot of things. I know that God is working with me. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm really trying to change a lot of things. Okay. But everything that you ladies were saying, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> I can, I can relate to a lot of stuff. I've been dealing with a lot of things. Okay. So, well, yeah. Appreciate you. Well, we thank but, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, it, and, and Joy, um, I want to change the conversation a little bit to uh, talk about uh, childhood and generational mental health. Mm-hmm. And um, I was going to start off with you and then I'll probably uh, jump in um, because recently I actually um, realized that uh, uh, me dealing with my mother and mother issues um, and, and, and mental health uh, possibly in my family um, yeah, I, you know, can you piggyback or talk about that? Because that's one of the topics that we had on about uh, mental health as, as childhood and basically, you know, your, your parents and how they react to you. And if they've had uh, mental health issues and trauma that maybe bled over into your life. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I am working through now, as Miss Angela said, some things that are just being revealed to me, um, there are some things in my bloodline uh. um, that I didn't have anything to do with. But because the generations before me didn't know how, understand what it was, recognize it, whatever it is, to break it, um, it has it has traveled, right? And I have worked really hard in my, with my daughter. I didn't do, I made a lot of mistakes to break some of those generational curses to not, um, I, one, I'll, I'll share this example because my guy brother and I just talked about it yesterday. One thing that I was adamant about, my daughter's father was not involved in her life. He was not active. He was a deadbeat. I never spoke a negative word to her about him. I never, the when he would come around once a year, once every 16 months, once ever, I never told him no. I never, when he would call, I never said he couldn't speak to her. 
when he would tell his lies and this and, that and the other, and she would, as a child, you know, come to me, I addressed it, but I never said a negative word to her about him. Now at 26 years old, mm. Um, and since probably the, within the last five to six, maybe even seven years, she's seen some of those things that were true, even now today, because as I tell her with some things, you're a grown woman now. I absolutely will not get in the middle of that. That's you and his relationship. I told her two things. Matter of fact, either you're going to decide to accept him for who he is and recognize that he's not going to change. or you're going to set boundaries for what you allow him to do in your life. Yes. Now I recognize that that's hard because she saw me not setting boundaries for what I allowed men to do in my life. Yes. But as I tell her, just because I didn't do it, doesn't mean you can't do it. And I had this conversation with my guy brother yesterday because my mother did not have a good relationship with her father. My dad wasn't around, but as growing up, you know, she said some things about my father in my presence. Well, I wanted to be around my dad, you know, even though he, I wanted to be around him and I wanted a relationship with my father, but my mother and my and family was saying stuff, right? So, I was 17 years old when my dad actually reached out to me and tried to forge a relationship, but then he died three years later. So that was 26 years ago. And I still deal with that now, but I can't talk to my mother about it because Mm -hmm. they don't understand that I wanted a relationship, but that's that generational bloodline of the no good daddy. And he ain't da 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 because at my mother's age now, bless her heart and I love her, she still make comments about her daddy who just turned 90 years old <laughs> on July 4th. You know, well, you know, we he wasn't, we know what he didn't do when I was a kid, but you 70 years old, boo. Yes. And I watch sometimes my sister say comments and do things around her sons regarding their father and I stepped in one time and I was like you know you all may not be together this it may not have worked the way you wanted it to but he's a very good father and I just I'm like we've got to break this curse you've got to stop bringing um your your experience is your experience and it's okay it's Mm -hmm. okay if you didn't want to be in your dad's life or you didn't want him in your life that's perfectly okay but you can't put that experience on your kids. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things that I'm, I, I said, Miss Angela, you teaching me today because <laughs> I just had a hysterectomy in 2017. And I'm, and when you said what you said, a light bulb went off because I'm just like, oh my God, I, maybe I need to really go back and to the doctor and research some things as been what's been going on with me because yeah. it's just been a lot. But in that, it's just like, the gen- it's the generational just I'm like come on yeah and I'm I'm just finding this out Miss Delisha like yes um just dealing with this and uh, and I'm and I've been in prayer saying God on both sides of my family I re- I repent mm-hmm. for their sins mm-hmm. I repent for for the for the curses the generational curses I mm-hmm. come before you show me what I need to call out specifically mm-hmm. I didn't have nothing to do with it I wasn't there. I don't know their sins, but God, we got to break it. Yes. Like we have to break it. Yes. And if it's got to be me, give me the grace to do it. Yes. Yeah. So that's the yes. place I'm in right now because it's so many. And I see in my family and people that I know just generational curses down the bloodline. But the problem is if the generations before us don't want to own up to it and, and admit that it, yeah, and Girl, we got that. Yes. <laughs> that goes on a lot. Yes. Yes. You got these yes. generations before us that they don't want to talk about stuff. They don't yes. want to admit stuff happen. They yes. want to push stuff under the rug. But then yes. you wonder why the generations after you were struggling the way that they struggling. Yes, yes. But nobody wants to have a conversation. 
Exactly. And that that's that's why I wanted to share um, of what I'm going through um, right now is because my grandmother, my mother's mother, had a Mickey slip to her. And they kept on putting her in mental institutions and all this, this stuff. And then years later, when um, she was hormonally unbalanced and couldn't handle things, they didn't want to face the fact that she could have a mental health issue, literally like going out of her mind. So they had to give her a, 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 a shot once a month in order for her to be chemically balanced in her body. And, but the, the lie that was told to us, because it was actually misinformation, they didn't know what had really happened to her. It was just say, oh, she was giving a Mickey. We was, it was like, some that don't sound right that you're that chemically imbalanced. And, and like I said, throughout the years, <clears throat> people in my family were like spazzing out having, you know, having, uh, going into, uh, even my own mother going, uh, uh, admitting herself to psychiatric wards and stuff, but she was like, I'm, I'm not crazy. And I'm just like, what is really going on? And just recently when the last five to seven years, my auntie spazzed out to the point they incarcerated her. They put her in jail because she was out outside naked in her, uh, husband's bushes, um, uh, stalking him. And, and I, and then it started me to thinking and asking the question, like, was my grandmother's mental illness, real mental illness? And y'all just didn't see it. Y'all just didn't recognize it. And you didn't know enough about it because that Mickey couldn't did all that. And both of y'all spazzing out, out is two out of five children spazzing out. And you have, and you need mental health. I mean, they're incarcerating you, giving, you know, drugging you and stuff and everything. And so I'm just like, it's something more to that. So the same way with joy, I, I had to start saying, Lord, what is it? It's, it's something more to it. Because at one point, to be honest, like I said, be honest with you, I was scared, like, am I going to go out of my mind? Especially when I would go through an anxiety attack or I would, a panic attack, I'd be like, am I going to go out of my mind? Because I started really thinking, like, this is in the bloodline. This this stuff is generational, but no one has talked about it. No one has said, oh, and then finally I went to a therapist. And once I went to the therapist, that's when I started realizing that it's mind over matter. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not just about like, okay, if she had it, what was going on? Um, you know, and now I'm going into preemie menopause myself. So like you said, that's, that uh, unbalances you as well. So it's so many things that we as women um, go through. And like I said, in the families, they talk about it in a negative way, or they talk about it and they talk about stuff that they really don't even know about. So they give you misinformation. So you really can't like diagnose or get the help that you really need because don't nobody really know the truth of the matter. That's another, that's the biggest, uh, with the curses, that's the biggest thing, the lie, because no one tells you purse, you know, the actual truth of the matter, you know, you get five different stories from five different aunties because they all experienced it five different ways. And then that's the part where you're like, well, who should I believe? Aunt Mary don't lie that much, but I know Aunt uh, Seely do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so you just like trying to figure it out and you trying to be like, well, who is really crazy? And he is truthfully, but you can never find the truth because unfortunately the, um, the, the generations that told the lie, they're gone now. So they can't answer you and they can't give you any solid answers. So it's almost like you got to start from root ground to figure it out and to understand what's really going on. And is this something that you even need to address? Because everyone else said that, oh, it's, it's nothing else. Mia, you have a question? I really didn't have a question. It was more so like a, to go off of what you guys were saying, you enjoy. Um, I've experienced my own generational curses and stuff like that. And um, like dealing with my, like, so my grandmother, she doesn't marry 
for love. She marries for money, honey. Like when I say marry for money, she's this this is her third marriage. And she's like, if you don't have no money, you can't be my man. Point blank period. And she was always one of those women that was about her money or about her man's money and nothing else in between. So like my mother actually and I'm just now learning this as I'm getting older because I never could understand why my mom was never affectionate she never said mm. I loved you she never had mother daughter talks we never did mother daughter shopping and outings and stuff like that or when we were sick we couldn't sleep in her bed like she didn't do any of that like like no hugs no kisses no I love you no nothing you know she was like a real tough lady and I was just I couldn't understand why and so now that I'm getting older I um I'm learning more and more about my mother and my grandmother's dynamic and me and my grandmother also have our own dynamic as well so um she doesn't my grandmother doesn't marry for money she does because she did not like the fact that it was 10 siblings amongst them with my great-grandparents and um she would they were poor so she didn't like that so so when she got older she it was is it, it was strictly about money for her so um the guy that the man that she's with now that she married now he um actually uh sexually assaulted me mm. and they end up getting married after the fact Mm. And me and my grandmother relationship was really strained from it's still strained to this day. Like I, my, my, my younger cousins and my nieces and nephews, when they go over to my like grandmother's house and it's like a family gathering, I don't allow the children to be by themselves Mm. around him or with her her and him just in the house together like I don't allow them to be in the house with them by themselves and I and it's paranoia for me because like I know what you did to me and I know that y'all swept it under the rug it does not get talked about when I tried to address it for my own mental health, health like yeah. for my own sanity my own like when I tried to address it with my grandmother she like well, I, I can't recall what you're talking about. And I don't, I, this is not something that I want to discuss right now. So we don't even talk about it. Like uh, my, me and my mother don't even talk about it. Like, because she is her mother. So she's like, I, I can't go against my mother type of thing, but I'm your daughter. You got to protect me above all. But seeing as, my grandmother set the tone with my mother as financially, I got you. Anything else, I don't have you. So my mom grew up that way. And so like in the situation, in this situation, my mom's like, I can't go against the person that provides for me and I can't go against my mother. So I'm getting left hanging by my granny and my granny, me and my granny were like so, so tight. And I lived with her when this happened. Mm -hmm. So the day that it happened, I got put out. I didn't have anywhere to go. And my mother was staying in a one bedroom with her boyfriend, my three brothers. And so I had to go there too. And I had to sleep on the floor. I was like, oh no, this is not, you know, it's like, so like now I refuse to even allow my little cousins or my nieces to be at my grandmother's house, like without me or anybody else present, like so like I was just recently over there last weekend and my nieces and nephews came to visit and it got quiet it got too quiet I was doing my one of my nieces hair and it got too quiet in the house and I I couldn't hear them anymore and I couldn't see them so I panicked I had an anxiety attack and I and I'm and my just so happened my husband walked through the door I said could you go in the back and see where the kids are because he would hit my, my grandmother's husband was home. So I said, could you go in the back and see where the kids are for me, please? Mm -hmm. My grandmother had the, had one of the kids on her lap, my, my nephew on her lap, but my niece was using the washroom. I said, are you crazy? Why would you not, why would you leave the door open, allow her to use the washroom with the door open and your husband home? Mia, you're blowing this out of proportion. No, I'm not. I'm protecting her. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I, and, 
they like my mom, my grandmother, they hate to see me coming actually <laughs> because, you know, they can't be relaxed. They can't be relaxed around me if there's children around mm -hmm. because I won't allow that to happen to anybody else on my watch. Yes. Like, yes. you know, if you all not going to defend me, that's fine. I'll learn how to heal on my own because I know better now. And I know for my own sanity and my, my own sanity that I have to heal by myself. But since to let to 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 stop it from happening to anybody else and from anybody else having to struggle by themselves, I, I keep a strong watch like, <laughs> you know, like I, I keep a, a watchful eye and I make sure that nobody is over there. When nobody else is like, if y'all just don't let the kids go over there by themselves, no, we're not having it. Yeah. They can't. Yeah, it's a no go. Yes, and, and it's that, all and that because was, that, was, that was one of our subjects: the uh, abuse, trauma, and mental health. They they go hand in hand. Yes. And when you're when when you're when when something happens like that, it's very traumatic, and it can lead into, like you said, anxiety attacks and and just different mental health things that you deal with. And um, like Joy was saying to you, blessings to you. It is such a shame that you have to carry that burden of protection for your cousins because they won't take ownership for it. And, and the, the thing is, is that it is it's sad because you're not the only person. You know, it, it's sad. You're not the only person who is carrying the, the new generational uh, guard to protect their younger uh, cousins and nieces and nephews around this person that people have seen to accept, not, not even seen, they have accepted and just, just keep it hush hush and don't address it. Don't, don't deal with it or anything. And, and, and that's just, that's such a harsh reality. And, and what can you do with that one? Well, but pray. Um, but pray. Yes, but pray. And, and, and for Daryl, I, I kind of want you to come in on that. Um, because you've had a lot of family um, structure kind of dealing with um, things of that nature. And you were saying how sometimes your family um, is, is dealing with those issues. Are you there? Take, take your mute off, my brother. You're going to call me out of the woodwork. Mm, yes, because I know you was back there itching. Um, Thank you so much, me. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem you. at all. Yeah, thank we you love you. Sure. We love you. We just want love, you to we, love I love you, you ladies. And we too. support thank you. you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> yes, Mia, you shine, Mama. You shine. I, I am really, really honestly very touched by your testimony, by your aura, by your strength. Um, I wanted well, to jump don't in. Don't make me cry. No, that, I'm just going to, I'm going to speak good my tears, truth. Good tears. I'm yes. going to speak, speak my truth um, because the Lord laid it on my heart and, and this is not supposed to be one of them meetings, but I mean, laid it on my heart earlier. Um, what's amazing about Mia is what, who you see is who she always is. And for her to have such a testimony that cuts so deep across so many levels, for her to radiate and shine the way that she does as we talk about mental health, it is um, <laughs> an amazing thing to behold myself because, like I said, she is... I'm her tribe leader. Like she says, I'm her tribe leader. So I've had the opportunity to have conversations with, with Mia one-on-one. Um, -on -one, and she's always this way. This that, that glow is, oh my God, is nothing but, I mean, you guys haven't heard her, her full testimony, but Mia, that is nothing but the Holy Spirit, Mama. Yes. yes. Walking with you. Yes. Everything that you've gone through, he has been there. Let that be your testimony that every hospital stay. He's there staying with you. Every polka the needle isn't has not been your last. 
he sustained you. Yes. That glow. I don't know anyone who is so young, who has such a rich and thick testimony and is still kind. Yes. Still sweet. Mercy. This has a sweetness about her spirit. This Mercy. has a sweetness. That's you know, that that sweetness is not made up. It, that, that's that's what I'm fit. That sweetness is not made up. It's genuine. It is it, genuine because you you don't have to share that. She didn't have to share it. And it's such a blessing to still have the, the smile on her face and still to be blessed and still can say. That's why I say, even though Joy said, you know, I said earlier, her name is Joy. And now if I come to find out, you know, she said to live up to that name. But the thing is, is that it's just contagious. I mean, when you see her and you see her smile and you and you just the feel the aura that comes across in her support for you. You know off the bat when you see joy that she supports you, that she likes you for who you are, that she finds the goodness in who you are, that she's like your you know, saying clapping your, her hands for you because she you she wants the best for you and she's not selfish with it. And so that's 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 what I'm seeing and feeling. It, you can't make those things up. When when people are genuine and they have a love and a care in their heart for people, just like Angela, Angela didn't have to share that with us or whatever the case may be. That was, that was, I mean, I knew she was going through something and what I just said, Lord, let me just keep praying for her. Let me just keep lifting her up. Cause I know you got her. And that's what she said. Just pray for me. Just pray for me. But sometimes you just want to just, you know, extend a hug and say, Hey, I love, I don't, I don't know you like that, but the love of God that's in me, I want to give to you. And so when I see Mia's face, Come I on, see thank you. face, I want to give them that. I want to give them that hug to say, I love you. If don't nobody else do, I support you. If don't nobody else do. And that takes, that takes time and that takes energy from the Holy Spirit to give that to you. Because I didn't always have it. But they they have it. They that that's what they've come out of their testimony with after they've put took off the soot and the ashes. That's what their testimony shows. It shows that when they came out on the other side, that God blessed them to still be here to testify and tell the story that I made it, and so can you. And it's such it's such a it's such a blessing, and that's why I said I just had an expectation and an anticipation today that we would not just be on surface, that we would dive and that we would get in, and that we would just see the heart of people. And that's what we want to do as an organization. Me and Federa talk about it all the time. We want you to know that you're being seen. It doesn't matter that it's just six of us on here. God sees you first and foremost. And then after that, we see you and we validate you and we love you. So what do you want to say? <laughs> yes, Delicia. Thank you for sharing. Um, what do you want to say, uh, Miss Angie? Your hand is up. I forgot all about that. I had raised it. Um, I wanted to 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 tell Mia. Um, I'm just really praying for you, and the mind the the mind space that you are in because I can just feel the anxiety of just going. You going to your grandmother's house, and he, the perpetrator is still there. And you have to be there constantly for when children are there. And if you're not there, you're breaking your neck to get there. That alone, oh my God. And so um, I don't feel sorry for you, but my heart goes out to you. And I'm, I'm truly praying for you that God delivers you from that because that is such a weight on you. That is, that's so strong. You're talking about a stronghold. That's a stronghold. Yes. I, I'm just asking for prayer for a way out for you from that situation. 
Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Go ahead, Antoinette. Yeah, I just want to say that um, I, I really love Mia. That's my prayer partner. She is so sweet and she is really genuine. And even when we all went out, she, you know, she just make me, I can't even explain it. Like, I really did just feel what she was saying. She is a really sweet girl. And, um, the other day she called me and I was going through some stuff. <laughs> and she prayed for me. And it was just so like it was just so sweet. She didn't ever judge me or anything. And I just really hate the fact that, you know, she went through that, but she is very strong. She is very strong. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing that, um, Antoinette. Yeah, um, yeah, going back to what I was saying, Mia, just know I can't I I can't say, you know, what's gonna happen um future wise. I won't even put my hand there. That's that's God's ram. But presently I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is with you every step. You know it. You know it. We, we, you know, you know. I know. We know. So you know. And I, um, I want you to understand that because the Holy Spirit is with you, that means goodness and mercy will follow you all the days. All of the days. Life. Life. All, <laughs> all the days. We talk all the days. That goodness and mercy will be there and so i want to just encourage you to be strong in the lord continue to fight whatever he's laid on your heart to do in regards to being a guardrail within your family he chose you for this time you were born for that assignment you were born for that there are certain mantles that some of us are created to carry some of us will never be able to understand yes the stories they would never be able to understand the mantle the true how how deep it really goes but there are some assignments that god created special people for they were just created with a little bit something extra i can't tell you how many parents have stopped and say, for Daryl, you don't know how much I wish my son was like you. Whisper. <sighs> because they see something. I don't know what it is, but I see it within you. And you can tell when God has great someone to carry a little something extra. Yes. So understand that no matter why you were born in this time period, why you were born in this season, you've been graced to carry the extra. Yes. He is there. And that goodness and mercy, it is following. Yes. I want to thank you, ladies. Um, This was... One for the books. Yes. Um, for anyone that's watching, I just want to say I'm gonna scroll back up <laughs> and say um, the information presented in this discussion may be triggering to some people. If you are having suicidal thoughts, contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five for support and assistance from a trained counselor. And if you or a loved one are in immediate danger, call 911. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Appreciate the discussion. We, we appreciate everyone's heart. We appreciate everyone's spirit. And we know that God, um, God is gonna bless all of us and in, in his time and his will and his frame that he has created for all of us to, to purpose and destiny for us. 
And we, we just thank each one of you for, for sharing your heart today because that your heart was truly shared and we and we love you the same with God's love. Thank you, ladies. You guys, you all were amazing. You all were amazing. Thank you. Yes. This has been another episode of Federal Speaks. I'm signing off. Bye. I'll be in touch, ladies. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes.